Welcome to our weekly roundup of key business developments in Sri Lanka. I'm Nishani Pigera. Let's first take a look at the main stories for this week. Sri Lanka expects aid over $1.3 billion to bridge 2025 budget gap. President warns against any changes to IMF agreement. And United Petroleum to supply 400 million litres of petroleum. In our top story this week, according to Bandalugunavardhana, Minister of Transportation, Highways and Mass Media, Sri Lanka is expecting over $1.3 billion from the IMF, ADB and the World Bank to finance the budget gap in 2025. This is in addition to the $3.65 billion debt relief obtained through external debt restructuring. According to the minister, the total financing gap is estimated at approximately $5 billion. Additionally, under the IMF program, Sri Lanka is expected to collect $250 million in the first quarter of 2025, with year-end reserves expected to be $1.5 billion higher. On a related note, Sri Lanka is to sign a $200 million loan agreement with the World Bank for the second stage development policy program. The loan, which is in the second tranche of the $400 million program, will be an additional financial support to the current IMF reforms. The first tranche was completed in 2023. With several presidential candidates expressing their intentions to renegotiate clauses in the signed IMF facility, President Ronald Vikramasinghe warned against any alteration, stating that the terms are non-negotiable. President Vikramasinghe emphasized the importance of the agreement, which ensures about 700 million US dollars every six months from major financial institutions, which is critical for stabilizing the economy. Any changes could lead to a delay or halt in IMF funding and a lengthy renegotiation process. Bloomberg Intelligence also cautioned that a potential new government's move away from current reforms could stall the recovery. It added that Sri Lanka's growth is expected to slow down in the second half of 2024 from an unfavorable base effect and a tight fiscal policy. United Petroleum, which commenced operations this Wednesday, said that it aims to supply 350 to 400 million litres of petroleum each year. United Petroleum entered the Sri Lankan fuel distribution market at an estimated $300 million investment with additional plans for a $30 million food venture in the future. Similar to Sinopec and RM Parks, United Petroleum will be permitted to operate 150 filling stations with the right to build an additional 50. Accordingly, the company is expected to claim a market share of around 14% in Sri Lanka on its entry. Merchandise exports in July rose 6.6% from a year earlier to nearly $1.1 billion in the month. Apparel exports rose 3.8% to $443 million, while tea and coconuts recorded strong growth. Exports to the United States, Sri Lanka's single largest export destination, rose 5.2% from a year earlier to $267 million, although trade to the European Union fell $221 million. Meanwhile, services exports expanded by a significant 16.4% from a year earlier to $293 million. This week, President Ronald Vikramasinghe declared open the first phase of a 350-megawatt liquefied natural gas turbine built by Sri Lanka LTL Holdings. The current turbine will have a 220-megawatt capacity. Just last week, Sri Lanka's LTL Holdings and India's Petronet LNG Limited signed a memorandum of understanding to jointly develop the necessary infrastructure and supply liquefied natural gas to the nation. This is in line with Sri Lanka's ambition to have net zero carbon emission by 2040. According to the Port City Colombo, 100 companies from a diverse range of sectors, including IT, finance, tourism and healthcare and more, have been onboarded as authorized persons of which 22 have been designated as companies of strategic importance. The port city is expected to generate demand for 30 to 50,000 meters of office space. In our weekly tourism update, during the first 25 days of August, over 143,000 tourists arrived in the country, bringing the year-to-date total to over 1.3 million. Daily arrivals were 5,745 in the month, down from the 6,058 recorded in July. India continues to be the primary source market, followed by the United Kingdom and China. The All Share Price Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange continues its downward trend for the third consecutive week. The market is weighed down by uncertainty surrounding the presidential elections. 
The index is now near a five-month low. Sri Lanka's LTL Holdings has announced that it will launch an IPO issuing over 1.1 billion shares at 14 rupees and 50 cents a share with an approval for an additional issue of 275 million shares. Subscription for the issue is expected to open on the 10th of September. At the Treasury bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on 91-day and 182-day maturities rose for the fourth consecutive week. Bids amounting to 185 billion rupees were received, of which 100 billion were accepted. The Sri Lankan rupee depreciated against the dollar this week with the central bank's indicative mid-spot rate ranging around 299 to 301 rupees. The central bank notes that the rupee has strengthened by 7.5% against the US dollar in 2024. And with that, we wind up for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for regular updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.